Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're discussing First Family, written by Patrick Tilly. It's book two in the Amtrak Wars saga. It's a sci-fi series, very detailed, very lengthy book so far, but there's so much world building and so much culture with all the different groups of people in this world. So much detail in what the world's like. Very good world building by the author. Book two, this book we're discussing, isn't as exciting as book one, but it's still very interesting because we get to see more detail about the Amtrak Federation. We had a bit of them in the first book, but in this book, we get a lot more. And that was very interesting because you just get to see the differences between the Amtrak Federation and the Mutes, who we met in great detail in book one. And also, in this book, we get to see more about the Iron Masters and their culture as well. And it's so different to the Mutes and the Amtrak Federation. So that just is, once again, very good world building by this author. At the start of this book, Steve Brickman is heading back to the Amtrak Federation. He's heading back home. He's left the Mutes. He's escaped. Or has he escaped? Because there's a prophecy about a person called Talisman. And Talisman is going to lead the mutes to victory or lead to safety. Or so the prophecy says. And Steve Brickman could be Talisman or he could not be. We're not sure at this stage. So we don't know if he's escaping or if he's just on his journey. This is part of the plan of Talisman. Anyway, he goes back to the Amtrak Federation and he's immediately not trusted. He's been missing for about six months, and they presumed he's dead, missing in action. And the fact that he's returned after being held captive by the mutes, and also he's showing those signs of radiation sickness. Because of those two things, he's not trusted. Also, spending time with the mutes, all the people in the Amtrak Federation think the mutes are diseased. So they just think that Steve Brickman is carrying disease as well. So they don't trust his motives for returning. They think he's got some diseases and also just worried why he's able to return up to six months and not have radiation sickness. And lastly, the mutes aren't known to keep prisoners. They usually just kill people from the Amtrak Federation that they capture. So they're also wondering why Steve Brickman was able to survive this. Why didn't they kill him? Not long after his return, there's a flag about Steve Brickman in their system. So they're quite computerized, got quite a bit of technology, the Amtrak Federation. And this flag is basically telling the people in one of the hubs underground to send Steve Brickman off to the capital. And he finds himself in the capital, still not trusted fully, but he also finds himself later on being invited to the White House to meet the leader of the Amtrak Federation and the leading family. While he's in the capital, he's also interrogated by a panel of people about his tale of capture from the mutes and escape. They don't fully trust his story, but what's interesting about the Amtrak Federation is there's all these undercurrents going on. You know, people's motives, what they believe, the face they're showing people, because they all seem very schooled into not showing their emotions, their true selves, on the surface. And that makes for some interesting goings on in the capital and in the Amtrak Federation as a whole. There's a lot of intrigue going on, it feels like. A bit of suspense, a bit of drama. And that makes this culture in this world very interesting indeed. After a while in this book, we return back to above ground and we see a bit more of the mutes again. And I like that because I find the mutes the most engaging culture for me in this world. I love being immersed into their world. I just find them so fascinating. The characters, how they go about doing things, everything about them I find fascinating. The reason we're above ground again is Steve Brickman has a secret mission. And part of that mission is to go back above ground and re-immerse himself into the clan that he was with before above ground. Because in this clan, there are people who can wield magic. And the Amtrak Federation doesn't like that. They want to capture those people and take them below ground. There's too much of a risk for people who have so much power above ground because the Amtrak Federation want to 
retake and reclaim the above ground for themselves and wipe out everybody else. So they do meet again, the McCall clan, the clan of the mutes that Steve Brickman was with in book one. They meet Brickman again and they welcome him back, but do they trust him fully? Well, never too sure, and I wasn't too sure about that when I was reading this, because there seemed to be a bit of doubt in the leader's minds of the McCall clan about Brickman's motives. But anyway, they do welcome him back and they're heading off to a big congregation of clans because once a year, all the clans of the mutes get together for about a week and then the Iron Masters come over by ship and there's trading going on for those days as well. The mutes give the Iron Masters slaves, amongst other things as well. And the Iron Masters give the mutes weapons, you know, iron instruments, amongst other things as well. But the, the iron instruments, the weapons, and the slaves are the two main commodities being traded between the two cultures. That whole part of the book, probably the last 100 pages to a third of the book, I found quite interesting. The Iron Masters culture is based on Japanese culture, the time of the samurai and the shoguns. And that was quite fascinating as well to have that in this world. Because in this world, it's about year 3000. I think it's 10 years or maybe 7 to 10 years before the year 3000 in this book. So it's interesting to have all these different diverse cultures in this world. We have the mutes who are almost hunter-gatherers, very tribal, and their t technology is very limited. But they do have magic, so that makes up for a bit as well. We have the Iron Masters, who are a bit more advanced. They're very good at developing things made of metal and iron. You know, they've got these big steamships they travel in. They can create weapons. They create crossbows for the mutes, and they're very deadly crossbows as well. Then we have the Amtrak Federation, who's underground, and they're the most advanced with technology. They've got computers, a lot of electronics. Their weapons are very advanced as well. So overall, the Amtrak Federation is probably the most advanced out of the three cultures. But at this stage, I don't know if the Amtrak Federation is the most powerful when you add up all different things about them. The Iron Masters seem very powerful indeed. Their culture is very interesting. They take offense very quickly and they're very quick to kill people, even their own people, if they get displeased. That was very interesting in this book and it added a lot of tension and suspense in that last part of the book. Especially when Steve Brickman is hanging around for one reason mainly. He wants to meet up again with Clearwater. Clearwater is the mute that he fell in love with in book one. Clearwater and Cadillac. Now Cadillac is like a chieftain in training in the mute clan. They went over to the Iron Masters at the end of book one. They took over a flying machine. And they took it over because the Iron Masters want a flying machine and they're willing to trade very powerful weapons for it. So that will give the McCall clan a bit of an edge on other clans above ground. They'll get guns from the Iron Masters. But Clearwater doesn't want to return to the McCall clan. Either does Cadillac. So Steve Brickman is risking his life basically to meet up with Clearwater again. But it seems that Clearwater doesn't want to come back to the clan. Or is she being held prisoner? Them are too clear. And I'm not going to give it away. But at the end of this book, there's one thing on Brickman's mind. He has to get somehow onto one of the ships and make his way across to where the Iron Masters have their territory. And he wants to rescue Cadillac in Clearwater. He thinks they need rescuing. So that's a big thing at the end of this book. And it just makes me want to read book three. I want to know what the Iron Masters territory, what their culture, when you're fully in that culture in the story is like. And I want to know what Steve Brickman's viewpoint is of the Iron Masters as well. John Chisholm is an interesting character in this book. He's part of the Amtrak Federation and he's there at the capital when Brickman is shipped off to the capital. And he poses as a doctor, or he may be a doctor. I'm never too sure because he seems not sinister, but there's something about Chisholm that is always hidden underneath the surface. He befriends Brickman, but we don't know why he's doing that. Is he doing it out of friendship? Is he doing it because 
he works for some sort of intelligence agency for the Federation. Never too sure. But John Chisholm is an interesting character, very complex. There's a lot about him, a lot of light and shade, and you're never too sure about his motives. Even when certain motives come to light later on in the story, you just don't know if that's his true motives and that's his true self. So a very well-crafted character, in my opinion. Fran is another interesting person in the Federation. She's in the capital as well, and she's either very closely linked to the ruling family or is part of the ruling family. Never too sure about that, because people who are linked or a part of the ruling family sometimes can pop up here, there, and everywhere in the Federation. So you're never really sure about people in different positions in this world. She's interesting because she has her own agenda, it seems, and she gets very close to Brickman. She's his protector or his sponsor or something like that in this world. And she watches over him very closely, or has been since he's a child, right up to now. So we're not too sure about her true motives. She knows about the prophecy as well. She knows all about the mutes and their magic and things like that. We're not really sure if she's you know, looking out for Brickman's best interests or her own, or just the interests of the Federation or the ruling family. Because sometimes the interests of the ruling family are different for what's best for the whole Federation. That's what makes Fran and the whole Federation very interesting. It's all these undercurrents, all that intrigue going on. Roz is Brickman's sister, or well, sister of sorts. They're not biologically related. They're just raised in the same family, in the same family unit. She's interesting. We met her in book one, but we see more of her in this book. She's interesting because Roz and Steve have some telepathic type link between them and they feel each other's pain and feel other things their emotions and things like that so it's very interesting and other people in the federation find it fascinating as well and you get the hint or there's some sort of mention or ideas in the book that this telepathic link may have been engineered so and they're watching over these to siblings to see how that link comes about as they get older, how powerful it is, you know, what can be done with that link. That's interesting as well. And the Federation uses Roz as almost blackmail for Steve. Do what we want you to do, or your sister is going to suffer. That plays out in the story as well. The first family wasn't as good as the first book in this series, but it's still a very good book because it gives us more of the Federation's culture and introduces us to the Iron Masters as well. And I think it's a great build-up to what I hope is going to be a great book in book three. I get the feeling that this book is almost you know, a staging for book three in a way, especially the last half of the book. And I'm excited to see what book three brings. I rate this a 3.5 out of 5. Still a very detailed, very good sci-fi series. The books in this series seem to be very long, but I do enjoy them. I like that detail. I like being immersed in these different cultures in this futuristic world. I'm finding I'm enjoying this series very much. On my channel, I do review other sci-fi novels. If you're interested in those videos, check out my channel and subscribe. There's also a sci-fi playlist on my channel. It should be on your screen now.